This is the Metcam 50 cubic foot steam heated sludge dryer. We're going to give you a tour of the general operation of this. Obviously this is the control panel. It's up on legs right now. It's going to be elevated even higher and this particular sludge dryer also gets a catwalk. These are the drive motors. Two electric drive motors feeding gearboxes which then are coupled by a coupling to the drive shafts, the augers. They're all direct drive, two augers independent. This is a centrally located greasing system. According to the PM chart, we give this thing a greasing pumps as needed. And you fill each of the bearings with grease. All of these lines have been pre-filled with grease and every pump feeds every bearing because the grease is evenly distributed through this block. This is the, the scrubber that pulls the humid air out of the sludge dryer. As the sludge dries, there will be some dust that accumulates and may be sucked out with the humid air. We don't want that dusty air to be discharged out of the building. So we scrub this with water. It pulls air into the scrubber, it soaks it, we collect the, uh, the particles, goes back to wastewater treatment, the humid air is exhausted out of the building. This also has a manometer so that you can monitor the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure and, and monitor its function. We also have a flow meter that monitors the flow into the scrubber. Solenoid valve for control. We're also monitoring the outlet pressure for the sludge dryer operation. If the sludge dryer, if the scrubber does not have air pressure on the outlet, it means it's not running. The sludge dryer is not permitted to run. This is the sludge outlet control. We have two of these, one on each side. It opens the gate automatically by the control on the control panel. When the gates are open, the sludge can fall through. You jog the augers to push the sludge across the opening until the sludge makes its way out completely so that the sludge dryer is empty. There's one on each side. When you're done, you flip a switch and they automatically close and it's monitored and indicated on the control panel. We have six steam inlet valves inlet pipes, three on each side. When connecting your pipe to the steam inlet, you must back this pipe up. This is welded directly to the steam jacket, and you cannot force, you cannot torque on this. You need to back up the pipe when tightening. These are the non-drive bearings. Again, they are receiving grease from the centrally located greasing system. These are the packing glands. They're packed with, with gauze, to hold the sludge back. This is an easily replaced uh, seal. As the sludge wants to leave the sludge dryer, this holds it back. Eventually they'll fail, but you can easily pull them out with some needle nose pliers, pack some new gauze in, you replace the seal. This is the other pneumatic uh, or automatic uh, actuator to open the sludge gate. These are the other three steam inlets. And we're back to the control panel. That is the Metchem 50 cubic foot steam heated sludge dryer. This is the Metchem control panel for our sludge dryer. General operation, you want to make sure the power is on from the source. We have it temporarily wired for uh, factory acceptance testing. System's on. Uh, make sure the e-stop is out. Hit system power. Everything powers up. These are the indicator lights. We have control switches. We have uh, basically uh, handoff auto and on off and open and close features. Uh, in normal operation, everything will be on auto and you hit cycle start. We'll go over that. This is the uh, timer module. It can talk to the PLC. We're gonna talk about setting timers for auger and for the uh, uh, scrubber time. This is the temperature controller. It has set point and actual temperature readouts. And we'll go over these one by one. This is the controller that talks to the PLC. Here we manage times for the auger run times as well as the scrubber run time. Typically the scrubber will run a little bit after the auger is done running. Here we're displaying the run current run time, current hours, current minutes. Both are at zero because we're not currently running. If we want to adjust the run times, we hit the uh, top button to the right, 
and we can see that the blower set time delay is at 14 seconds. 14 seconds is just a test number. We would probably set it to five, six, 10 minutes, whatever seems appropriate. This is how long the scrubber will run after the sludge time is done, because we're still pulling out some fumes. We hit it again, we can go to the run time of the dryer itself. Currently it's set to two minutes, again, just for test. You might set it to three hours, four hours, six hours, whatever is appropriate for the dryness you want. To change the time, we just hit an up or down arrow and it starts flashing. Well, I'm not gonna let you uh, run for hours for a test. We're gonna go to minutes. And if I wanna change it to um, three minutes, I'll hit the up arrow. It's now at three minutes, but that's a long time for a test. I'm gonna go back to two minutes and then log it in. The time is set. And then I go back, hit this button again, it goes back to the current run display. Same thing with the sludge dryer, uh, the, the scrubber delay. If I want to change that, I hit any of these buttons and it starts flashing. If I want 15 seconds, I hit the up arrow. 16 seconds, and then I log it in. Hit that button. If you don't hit that button and go right back to the main menu, you have not made the change. This is the temperature controller. We're currently reading uh, an actual temperature of 63.2, 63.3, and our set point is 230 degrees. Both are in Fahrenheit. If we want to change the temperature, we just hit the up or down arrow, and the video may look like it's flashing all the time, but right now the green numbers are flashing. And I'm going up to say 200, I'm going to try to exceed 300 degrees, because that's our limitation. We cannot exceed 300. I'm going to press and hold, stuck at 300. Well, I'm going to go back down to say 290. I'm creeping up to 290 and I hit the set button. It's now set to 290 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to go back to 230. 230 degrees should be a good starting operation temperature. Two thirty. Hit the set button. I'm now logged in at 230 degrees Fahrenheit. First thing we're going to do is fill the sludge dryer. So to fill the sludge dryer, we need the lid open. So the lid is currently open. The red light is on, telling me the lid is open. I can add the sludge by whatever means necessary. In this case, there's going to be an auger feeding it, and it's going to hit the center of this large sludge dryer. So we may want to jog the sludge dryer augers to help distribute the sludge as it's coming in. So we do this manually. This is the only time the sludge dryer augers will operate with the lid open. And if you want to turn the augers in the other direction, you can put it in forward. So turn the other way. You can hear the motors ramp up gradually, run at their maximum speed, and then when you let go, they ramp down. Once the sludge is distributed and the sludge dryer is fully loaded, we close the lid. The lid, the lid open light stays on until the lid is completely closed. Everything moves slow and steady so as not to surprise anybody with quick motion. So the lid is virtually closed now. It's almost there. We're about to hit the limit switch and turn that light off. Once the sludge dryer is full, the lid is closed, we turn everything to auto. Steam on. Lid is closed, gates are closed. We now hit cycle start and the whole system begins. The scrubber is pulling the exhaust fumes, the humid air is coming out. Uh, a hot contact in the control panel says steam on and the augers are moving going to run for two minutes total. The run timer is currently showing uh, current hours are zero, current minutes is zero. We have not yet achieved one minute of run time. Once we have, that display will turn to a one. And when it reaches two, which is our set point, it will reach zero again because it stops running. Once the sludge is dried, we're going to put the uh, cycle timer 
to hand. That means I can control everything by hand. I want to open the sludge gate. So I'm going to hit open. Gates are now open. Or opening. I can hear them motioning. Now that they're stopped, I'm going to uh, uh, unload the sludge by turning this to on. And it's turning the augers on to push the sludge across the open gates. Once the sludge is unloaded, we can shut this off. Once we've dumped all the sludge, we're going to close this gate. We're going to wait till the gate is completely closed. There's two gates, and this light goes out when both gates are closed. Both gates are closed. We're now ready to receive new sludge to dry. So I'm going to open the lid, and the process begins again. Once we start refilling, we can jog the auger to help distribute the sludge in the in the trough. Ready to run, we close the lid. Lid is closed. We can now start running again. We're starting a normal cycle again. But let's say somebody says, we need to check the sludge. Something might be amiss. We want to make sure it's full or whatever the issue is. We can pause the cycle. The auger stop. The heater stays on. The exhaust scrubber stays on. I can open the lid. I can inspect whatever issue we may feel is there. Once the issue's been resolved, if we need to shut it down and do maintenance, we can do that. Otherwise, if we uh, just verified level, for example, we can now close the lid. The timers are paused when this happens. So we have not interrupted our drying cycle time until we put this back. Now the drying timers resume where they left off. If the sludge is dry before the end of the cycle, maybe it wasn't a full batch, whatever reason you may want to stop the cycle early, you can stop the cycle early by just hitting that button. And it's as if the sludge dryer had reached the end of its cycle. The scrubber is still running for its uh, pre-designated time, in this case 15 seconds. And it'll shut off too. Cycle's done. If at any time, for any reason, you feel you need to stop the sludge dryer, you can hit the emergency stop and everything shuts off. You've killed the power. If you've resolved the issue that made you shut it down, turn the e-stop button, it pops out, power the system back up, and you can resume or restart the cycle. The timers are starting over.